Hi, this is a quick video to show off a new feature of the procedural texturing module for Microsplat. Um, so if you're familiar with this module, uh, it's a very fast way to uh, texture your terrain using height and slope filters. Um, this is already set up with it. And so basically here I have a couple textures and you can see uh, like this height filter here. As I adjust this, you'll see all the texturing responds in real time. Uh, this also happens entirely on the pixel shader, uh, so basically whatever I set these settings to will be applied to the train even as the train is edited and uh, can be applied completely at runtime uh, with no generation of splat maps. So that's pretty cool, but sometimes what you really want to do is combine this with a more traditional uh, splat mapping workflow. And so I have a new mode for this, um, which up here in procedural texture you'll see combine with splat. So if we turn this on, then what happens is, uh, after it recompiles the shader, is that uh, we can use the traditional painting tools to paint where we want procedural texturing and where we want uh, our regular texturing to go. So uh, let's go to our terrain here, and we will go to our paint tools. And here, if I paint this first texture in the list, uh, this is going to use the procedural texturing workflow. And uh, so I had this baked into the train, which is why it looks very similar. But now if we go over here to this texture, uh, we can paint some grass here, and it'll paint grass. And we can paint some of this texture here, and it'll paint that texture. And then if we want to revert, we can just paint our original texture back down, and it'll go back to the procedural texturing. And you can specify the index uh, of the texture you want to use for this. Um, so if I go back to my material again, you will see that um, in this uh, material, right at the top here, um, is it the top of the layers here, we'll see this procedural index. This is the uh, texture that will be procedural texturing. Now note that uh, when you paint this texture, you're going to get the procedural texturing, but you can still use that texture in your procedural texturing. Uh, it's, not, it's not like recursive or something. So I'm still using uh, this texture, which is the one we declared as being the um, procedural texture, uh, in the actual texturing that's done procedurally. Uh, but when I paint that texture, it's going to choose procedural versus choosing something like if I paint down grass and things like that. So that gives you kind of a non-destructive workflow where you can use the procedural texturing, you can update the procedural texturing, but keep paths and uh, small details that you've painted uh, in place. There is an increased cost to it because now you have to have splat maps. Uh, so you're going to sample the splat maps and run the procedural routine. Uh, but I actually only run the procedural routine on pixels which uh, require it. Uh, so that should um, minimize that. So if you start painting more area, uh, it still has to look up the splat maps because that controls whether it's procedural or not. Uh, but you won't pay the procedural cost on the areas that you've painted, which hopefully is a little bit of a, a speed improvement. So that's it. Um, hope you liked it.